As Lord Leighton was hosting his soirees, a rather different kind of music making was happening a few miles away at Alexandra Palace. In 1875, the largest concert organ in Britain was built there and was soon attracting the best players in Europe. Since it was renovated in 1929, the organ has been sadly neglected and an appeal has been launched to restore it to its original glory. There's still a long way to go before the necessary £600,000 has been raised, but work has already started and I went down to Alexandra Palace to see how it's going. I'm now with Henry Willis IV in the Great Hall at Alexandra Palace, which is the most magnificent building, several hundreds of feet long, almost equally wide. It, the restoration in 1980 has made the place look very beautiful inside. And behind us is what exists so far of the restored organ, which, by the look of it, isn't a great deal, is it, Henry? How, how much of it is, are we actually looking at? It depends whether you go by weight, physical size, or number of pipes. By number of pipes, half of it's there. By weight, a quarter of it's there. By physical size, a third of it's there. How does this compare to the way it was, say, at the turn of the century? Um, very similar, to the best of my knowledge and belief, but I didn't know it at the turn of the century. I only knew it after my father had done things to it in 1929, which was a, a semi-restoration following it having been butchered at the end of the 1418 war and lowering of the pitch to uh, A440 at 60 Fahrenheit. Now, at that time, it was one of the great organs of the country. And still is, in my opinion, even though it's incomplete. But the photographs show something very different. I mean, what we're looking at here is something 30, 40 feet wide, about 50 feet, 60 feet high. Yes. Whereas in the old photographs you see from the 20s, you see workmen looking very tiny, standing next to the very biggest base The pipes. very biggest pipe in the front was uh, 32 foot speaking length, 45 feet body length, seven foot from the tip to the languid, that's where the mouth is. And the bloke that's standing in the photograph, Aubrey Thompson Allen, uh, was a six foot three bloke, so it gives you a pretty good idea of the measurements. Let's go back to the history a little bit, because after the turn of the century, it went through rather sad times, didn't it? It was banned. Well, earlier than that. Uh, the first organ was built in 1873, burnt down, and the replacement was built and completed in 1875. The story is that the, my great-grandfather was given the order for the replacement before the ashes were cold. And then uh, little bits and pieces were done to it. And then in the 1418 war, the place was used as a refugee hostel. And they slept here and shook their blankets out so that at the end of the 1418, the whole of the interior of the organ was an inch and a half deep in blanket dust, which looked something like underfelt for carpets. And uh, then it was used as a temporary billet for soldiers being released after the 1418 war. They broke into the organ, because it wasn't up on a platform like this then, it was up uh, uh, tiers, orchestral tiers and so forth. And they broke in, uh, took pipes, and took them on the railway, that's the Alexandra Palace railway station, which is out the back, down into London. I think it went to King's Cross, I don't remember. And they used them for as bludgeons and baseball bats, if they knew what baseball bats were, around us bats. And then when they'd finished with them, they threw, out the, threw them out of the train windows. So those were picked up and brought back when it was discovered what had happened to them. And then it wasn't until 1926, 7, 8, when, as you know, there was a dearth of work, as there is now, and uh, my father agreed to start the restoration in anticipation of the full sum of money being available. Now, about 16 years ago, when the big fire happened, uh, you, had, by that time, had already rescued quite a few of the pipes. And, and take oh, them yes, away because, yes, because the politics of Haringey was such that a Conservative council said, let's get rid of this thing, and it was offered for sale, and it was going to be bought by a, a, a gentleman who swore, an American gentleman who swore blind that he was not a scrap metal merchant, or if he was, he wasn't going to scrap the metal. Uh, this left a doubtful taste in people's mouths, and the instrument was uh, also tendered for by uh, a gentleman who was a, a nurse and in order to give his bid respectability because it was considered that he might not be able to fulfill a, a contract if he entered into it, 
Some people are uncharitable enough to think that. I was asked if I would participate and I put my name to it and when the came up and the bid was accepted I also had to put my money to it and it was agreed that it became mine and it went to store in my Liverpool, Huddersfield and Petersfield factories and it wasn't until the political possibility of it being restored in the hall came up that I started to restore part of the organ and people were given the opportunity to pay for the restoration of one pipe the biggest one at that time, I think, was 500 pounds. It's probably 2,500 now. And the smallest one, and I can show you some of the tiny ones, I think was one shilling and sixpence. And school children that came round or whatever put their name on a chart. Yes, that one's mine. And I still have the chart that shows that Joe Bloggs paid for the top note of the tears for one and six, or I forget exactly what it was at the time. The organ that we're looking at now, how much of it survives from that 1929? Well, if one went into the centre, uh, you can see Reworking. that the very front three ranks of pipes, the smallest three ranks of pipes, are the identical pipes that were at the very front before. And these are some of the pipes that you bought at that time? These are the pipes I bought. Now, the wooden ones behind are all replacements. And if you look very carefully, you will see that there's an odd pipe which is a slightly brighter colour than the others. Those pipes are ones which I have made new to replace ones which are missing from the original sets which were originally on the grate of this organ. And the vast majority of the metal pipes which are in this organ are the original metal pipes. Here we are back in the centre. Yes. Let's and take a look at the console. The console, like everything else here, has to be locked. Fortunately, the console is too heavy for somebody to pick it up and take it away. Otherwise, it would have disappeared by now. Now, this, this is the original console that my father put in, but it is not the original console which the organ was had built in 1875. So this is 1929. This is 1929 odd. Well, let's let's set this great monster into motion. Well, there's a button here. Wind on. Usually shout to my lads because one of our staff was killed when a bellows came up one day in the factory in London in 1936 or something. He was lying on top of the bellows and somebody switched the wind on and an organ he was crushed to death. for an organ that's only half finished. The appeal